Sessions. Market News First. News you can trust. Thank you for joining us, Saul Album Micro Cap Engine. And we have a special guest lined up. We have Richard Gabriel of DNA Print Genomics, ticker symbol DNAG, and I'm looking forward to speaking with him. So as soon as I get the nod, we have the nod, right, guys? Okay, we do. I'm going to go ahead and bring him up. Richard, this is Saul Album, Market News First. How are you doing? Hey, Saul. How are you? Good. It is a lovely day today. Market's up today. Uh, no c- catastrophe in the mortgage markets extra. So uh, reasonable day today. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm always, uh, it's uh, blue skies up here in Boston. That's uh, where I'm at right now. And uh, we always uh, uh, think of blue skies with uh, up-trending markets. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll take it. Now, the other day I was reading a little article saying that, that a lot of the DNA searchers, the people that had decoded the human genome, had non, now gone back and started decoding individuals and their family members, and they found out that the differences in people's DNA in aggregate is a lot greater than people thought. Is that true? Yes, it is. Can, and, you, can uh, you talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, we, I'll just give you a little background on DNA print. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Tony Ferdakis is the founder of the company, and he uh, has a background in genetics, uh, started out his career as, I think, the fourth employee at Corexa. And Corexa is now owned by Big Sum Conglomerate Pharmaceutical Company. I don't remember uh, uh, what the name of the company is, to be frank. Uh, but during that uh, tenure and also during this earlier uh, period, um, the whole effort in the early or late 90s and, and when he started the company in 2000 was on what they called pure populations. And uh, in investigating those pure populations, they found out that those populations weren't pure either. So uh, it brought uh, him to the mindset of developing technologies around what we call admixed populations, because if there are no pure populations, then everyone is mixed. And so he started looking back uh, not just at the recent DNA, but at what we call the ancient DNAs. And uh, so this test that he developed where he scanned the entire human genome and isolated a, uh, a set of um, about 10 to 20,000 of what they call ancestry informative markers, and then winnowed those down into the best uh, ancestry informative markers. And uh, those are used to describe and look back into a person's uh, DNA uh, back about 20 to 30,000 years. And that was the basis for our first product called Ancestry by DNA, which anyone can get today. They can go to our website. And uh, it's a painless uh, test. It's a, a cheek swab, and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, and what it'll tell you is where your genetic ancestors migrated from. Uh, as you know, that you know this recent uh, explosion in communication in human populations, in comparison to the human genome, is actually a recent event. So it it doesn't uh, it doesn't look at any of your recent. Um, um, sort of uh, uh, permutations, but it looks back in time. And why is that important? It's because that's where all of the factors that are brought forward in current populations that makes us individual different peoples are inherited over a long period of time and not a short period of time. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the crux of our uh, technology. And it seems that there's a lot more differences between uh, between people than we thought there is. Is that correct, too? Oh, absolutely. The, uh, uh, we started off with uh, doing the work for uh, genealogists and, and people who are interested in their, uh, in their ancient day, uh, DNAs, as well as uh, people who, for instance, uh, have moved to a new country and may have lost um, you know, relations uh, uh, in, in the past, uh, you know, for instance, through all the wars and stuff that uh, have happened over the relatively short time period have affected uh, uh, the information that people can gather about their family. So uh, this really helps uh, people, you know, sort of identify that. But uh, to get back to your point, uh, is there a difference? Well, we carried this one step forward uh, into the forensics community, and why we chose the forensics community 
is because we wanted uh, we wanted to be able to validate our technology, and uh, so we took our database information and our development plans and developed uh, what we call DNA Witness. And DNA Witness is used to describe an individual from the DNA left at a crime scene or to describe an individual whose remains have been found. Uh, we have done nearly 200 criminal cases now, and uh, about six individuals have been apprehended uh, as a result of changing the direction of a criminal investigation. And most of our work is uh, done by word of mouth from detective to detective. Uh, some of the more spectacular cases that we've done is uh, that we can talk about. There's many of these cases we cannot talk about. Now, now, okay, uh, now you have. Now I got. I got to break in. Sorry. Now you have no, right. amazing products here, amazing products here, and uh, what 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 I'm seeing here is not just in the U.S. but a global market for these products. Can you speak to that? 